Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This episode is all about every day being a holy day and a lot of the signs and synchronicities that we've gotten that led us to this point. I want to bring in Sherry. What is up, Sherry? Hey. Let's start at the beginning. So most everybody's heard your story about the ship that appeared over the pool to you and Darby saw it and uh, Jay saw it behind her, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And uh, a year after that... Tell us what happened. Okay, well, we came to the conclusion that it was like a Merkaba and a spirit guide um, encounter. A lot of people would tell us that it was probably a Chinese lantern. And I had looked one up and I was sure it was not. But then, you know, everybody says stuff like that and everything. And the next 4th of July, on the 4th of July, a year later, the neighbor had lit off a Chinese lantern. And the thing was, it was so unusual because he went all the way to the back of the property, which put it like in the in our vision field when he lit it. And he's not really interactive with the 4th of July and stuff. So for him to do it was odd. And Darby, right away, we felt this feeling that it was like a sign, just confirmation that our, what we saw was not a Chinese lantern. And so that was on the 4th of July. So in comes like, the thriller Mandela effect, the Halloween special that he had put out. And there was all these synchronicities about Halloween. Even the fact that one of the first messages I got from him when he said that I needed to focus and you need to remember who you are. Whenever I woke up, I got a Twitter notification and it said, Michael Jackson Ghost Adventures is now following you. And then all the way up until right before the Isetti trip. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to be going. And you remember all that, right? Right. And that was in August of 2019. So I was like, well, if I can't go to Isetti, then maybe I can go to this other alien ranch. And I was going to send you a video about it. But what you didn't know is, because I don't have cable or whatever, what you saw on cable, you found that exact episode and sent it to me without ever checking it first. Right. But it I wasn't was, that episode. <laughs> what was it? It was a Michael Jackson episode. Uh, it, was, which, it wasn't even Ghost Adventures. It was no. something totally different. No. And when you sent it to me, I wasn't surprised because of our history with Michael Jackson and the things that, you know, we've already gone through or whatever. But when I told you about it, you're like, what? That's not even what I sent you. So that kind of tied back to the whole Michael Jackson and Ghost Adventures are yeah. following you uh, way yeah. back before we even met. Right. And things fell into place and I ended up getting to go. And what I noticed was, which was so weird, was that on 8-8, which is the, the date that we were going, was yeah. my dad's death date. Mm -hmm. The very and next day was... The next day was Christopher's birthday. Christopher's birthday, which if you guys remember, Angela, who, who you see right here, it was her son's birthday on 8-9. And then... On 8-11 was Charlene Richard, the little Cajun saint that's buried by my house where I meditate and pray for the children. That was on 8-11, her death date, as well as Janie Lane, who I also had started having. He's the lead singer from Warrant that I started having communication with. He showed me so many things. And so I, was, I thought, what was on 8-10? But what was 8-10? 8-10 was the 222nd day of the year. <laughs> there was all these synchronicities on all of those days. After that, when I come back home, it was Michael Jackson's birthday. And my daughter calls me and she's tripping out because a man came into her restaurant in our very, very small town and he had on East Seti shirt. Okay, so that was 829. That was just a few weeks after the East Seti trip. But if you think about the East Seti trip being 8 11 that we were just talking about and then you swap those numbers you have 11 8 now 11 8 was the first day of the ketchum idaho mandela effect conference and that was also my brother danny's birthday who passed away when he was four and then we had that synchronicity that we actually talked about on there with the song uh, daniel 
which is your brother's name, Daniel from Elton John. It said, Daniel, you're a star in the face of the sky. And then it changed to faith and it was so clear and I heard it and we were like going into the Ketchum area and everything. So that was so cool. Then everybody's speaking at the conference was really good. Then of course on 1110, which was that Sunday, the last day of the conference in Ketchum, Idaho, Kimberly Lynn Hansen did her presentation, which had a lot to do with Christmas. Then, of course, we mentioned in the other video about how on 1111 we got all these really neat synchronicities. Of course, it was the one year anniversary of when we had our Tulsa get together and we all got to meet for the first time in Tulsa. And uh, we got Holiday on the Ghost Radar, we got Michael Jackson, and it was due to Sherry's uh, Michael Jackson experiences that we actually got brought together to do that episode that we did before we ever did anything together. We did the, uh, when her and Darby was on, we did the Michael Jackson special. So as you see, it's all beginning to tie together. And then it was, of course, my mom's birthday, 11-11. That was for years, I would get 11-11 on the clock and feel like my mom was saying hello or whatever. And uh, so that's before I even knew about synchronicities, I would get the 1111 from my mom. What was so neat was all of her stuff was like Christmas related. The, everything that Kimberly talked about at the conference. This is so crazy, you can't make this stuff up. So after the Mandela Effect conference, Kimberly Lynn Hansen emails me and the rest of the speakers from the conference to let us know that her iPad had created this video that looks like it's predicting a future get together in Vancouver. Just using videos and pictures that's on her iPad, it just creates this memory that hasn't happened yet, basically. So we all felt like it was telling us we need to have this get together in Vancouver and it needs to be on, of all days, Valentine's Day. So while we're emailing back and forth about this get together on Valentine's Day in Vancouver at this art exhibition, I you know, I'm emailing back and forth, but in my mind, I'm thinking, ah, I'm not going to have the money to go to this thing. You know, of course, I'm like, yeah, I'll be there. It sounds great. And I know if I'm, I'm supposed to be there, I'll be there and everything. But in my mind, I had doubts about whether I'd be able to be there or not. So at the same time, I get an email from a friend, Micah, in Finland, who sends me this funny link of this guy dancing around. It was a Vancouver tap beer commercial and it's it says vancouver tap into it just at the same time that they were talking about this get together in vancouver on valentine's day and in this video as you see here it's got this white rabbit in the background and i send it of course to kimberly lynn hansen and she's like cracking up laughing and she goes this is exactly how the universe talks to me and everything and then a few weeks after that was your mom the anniversary of her death date which was what day 12-2. 12-2, okay. And I had sent you a song by a band that me and my kids have always loved. They're called We the Kings. And when I sent the link underneath it, it said that they were coming in concert the next night in New Orleans. The last time that they came for a secret Valentine show to be in Metairie, Louisiana, which is like right by us. And so that was the last time that we'd saw him was for a secret Valentine tour. It hit me somehow that Kimberly's Christmas presentation, she had some big spray painted hearts. And I realized that on the secret Valentine CD that they had a Christmas song that was called Into the Light. I kind of felt this like this merging or whatever of these holidays and started noticing all of these dates were shown to me at ESETI and the Mandela Effect Conference and there was death dates of significant people in my life and birth dates and it just like came to me that every day was a holy day or a holiday. It was so strong and I just felt like I needed to share it with everybody because if you really look at it, everything that's in our past is just memories and everything that's in the future is just your imagination. So really all that you have is the now. And so really what we're trying to say is that every moment is a holy moment. I, I don't want to give a lot away, but in Kimberly's presentation, they basically created a, like a little shopping center kind of. And anyway, I was Christmas shopping online at Bath and Body Works and they had this candle and it just like jumped out at me because it looked just like what she had drawn. 
and told her story about, and it also said New York on it, which was the setting. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get this for Kimberly. This is like for her. So I'm looking for a small box to put it in, just the right size. And I'm hunting all over the house. And there's this one closet that we never go in. And I opened the closet in my dad's office and there was this small box that looked perfect. It was the only thing on the floor. And when I pulled it out, you know, I had these memories of my dad because it was addressed to him, but it was addressed to the fire department. I was getting everything packed up for her. And in his office on the floor was a, a really small washer. And I had gotten her a little necklace and she had had the little wish washer story where you could basically manifest the washers if you focus on them. And here was this little wish washer and I was like, this will be perfect. She could put this on the necklace. And I got it all packed up and I looked up at the clock and it was 12 after midnight. And I was like, it's getting late, it's after midnight. And my mom's like, yeah, 12, 12. my dad's birthday. 12, 12 on his birthday. So <laughs> yeah, it was 12, 12. And that was when um, I realized that it was my dad's birthday. So I get it all packed up and I'm like writing her this little note and I'm like, this is amazing how it felt. It's on my dad's birthday when I'm getting it all packed up for you. And I told her, you know, this is like I had a little help from my nonlinear dad. <laughs> so I send it to her and it ba it arrives late, but just on time on her birthday. So it that was really cool. And then, you know, she told me the fire department was something she was going to use in some future work. And then my dad, you know, it, the fire department had got brought up because of the box that, you know, it's kind of like my dad helped me send her the, the present, you know. And then even with her work, they had the, the white rabbit involved. And I always have all these Alice in Wonderland synchronicities. But anyway, the white rabbit and that was signifies like Easter and then up into the yesterday video that Shane and I did and he has hashtag on there of Easter eggs and was talking about little Easter eggs finding a minute and I was starting to get all these Easter synchronicities. Okay so what we see is already we see this meshing of holidays. We had the Vancouver trip on Valentine's Day followed with the white rabbit which is sort of representative of Easter and then as you just mentioned Easter and the white rabbit and the Easter eggs in our yesterday video. And then while we were trying to come up with a 2020 date for the next conference, we were looking uh, at dates in April. So that's when Lauren Canal Pavelka mentioned that her birthday was on the 8th. Her son's birthday was on the 6th. And I was like, oh, you and your son's birthday is a day, two days apart. There's a day between or whatever. And then I said, well, my birthday is March 30th and my daughter's birthday is April 1st, so there's a day between our birthdays, and then we realized it was only five days until her son's birthday, and two days until her birthday, and so I started noticing this 2525 synchronicity with between birthdays, and then uh, that's when Jerry Dark Wolf said, oh, well, my birthday's five days after Lauren Canal Pavelka's birthday, so this ended up being April 13th, and that was the weekend of Easter. So we didn't want to do it Easter weekend um, in April. So now I think the date's been moved into May. And still puts like it was almost on Easter, which is connecting Easter. And interestingly, in the yesterday video, you had mentioned that, you know, the Annie tomorrow. So again, you have yesterday, tomorrow, and the now. The funny thing is the first time I had Kimberly Lynn Hansen on before the Ketchum Idaho conference, in November, she said uh, her friend had watched the program, saw my 333 hat, and 333 was her angel number. It was a huge synchronicity. So the next time that I had Kimberly Lynn Hansen on, after the Idaho event, we were talking about the 333, and uh, I think it was Magic Sister was in the chat, and she said the 333rd. And I was thinking it was the 333rd day of the year by her saying that. So I mentioned it to Kim, and that's how she was telling me about the whole 333 number and what's wrong is right. And it's so neat that, you know, we were getting together on the 333rd day of the year. So after the show was over, I did the math on it and saw that it really wasn't the 333rd day of the year. It was really the only the 326th day of the year. So I had to send her a message. I'm sorry I messed up the date. I'm not sure what Magic Sister was talking about. She must have been talking about something else. So then I figured out what 333 days before that date was, and it actually ended up being 
Christmas, which is even better than I originally thought, with Kimberly Lynn Hansen's whole presentation being about Christmas. And so I go home. I haven't been home in a long time, and I'm so excited to talk to Darby. And the first thing she says is, I have to show you something. I've got to show you this. And she doesn't know anything about everything that went on. And she turns on the the DVD player and is showing me on the movie The Santa Claus how the E like is like a little light flashes through the words, lights up the E and then it drops off and fades away real quick before the rest of it. And, and that's a Mandela effect for people. People remember Santa Claus having an E on the end for some people. Right. Yep. And so I said to her, I said, okay, I, I got to tell you all this. And I went through like everything that I'm saying right now, you know, that this video is about. And I said, okay, I'm going to be quiet and you tell me something magical that's happened since I saw you last. And she said that she locked her keys in the car and had to pay $50 to pop a lock. And she was like, mom, I did everything that you said. I said, I'm going to try to make this positive. So I said, you know what? It's okay. I mean, who knows? Being delayed could have saved me from an accident or something like that. So, and I'll, I'm going to make it, I'll make the money back. It's going to come back to me. And so she gets to work late and her boss calls her off to the side and told her she would give her $50 like right now if she would sing a song for her friend's birthday. So I was like, oh, how cool. You got your money back and all that. And she's like, yeah. And she said, I have a video of it and I'd show you, but um, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. And I said, well, send it to me anyway. I want to see it, you know. And yeah. so and I thanks just, to Thanks to Darby. We're going to play yeah. it for you right now. Hi, I heard we have a birthday in here. <laughs> so I came to say holiday, celebrate. If we took a holiday, oh yeah, oh yeah, took some time to celebrate. Come on, oh yeah, just one day out of life. It would be, it would be so fun holiday. It's your birthday, so celebrate. Oh my God, yeah. so she doesn't sing happy birthday to you. She sings this sort of customized version of Holiday by Madonna, which... While all this other synchronistic stuff's happening with Holiday. Now, let me add to that. Micah, who sent me the email with the whole Vancouver tap into it, synchronicity uh, at the time, he sends me an email. Uh, it was right before Christmas. And he says, oh, this is all the emails I'm going to send you. you know. And then he sends me this link, and it's Madonna's Holiday video. This was later the day after Darby sent you the Holiday video. Right. Just so amazing. Another synchronicity. Yeah. And I think um, when you think of when you really break down what holiday means, it means holy day. And if you take the meaning of holy, holy means set apart or set aside or made special. So when you think of every day being a holy day or living in the now, I think this is all getting back to really living in the now, making every moment set apart and holy. There really is no yesterday or tomorrow to worry about. All there is is this very infinite moment of now to really make the best of it. Right, and every day is everybody's birthday, death day, every day. Exactly. Every moment is holy. Yes, exactly. Whole, W-H-O-L-E. Whole, I like that, yeah, definitely. Lots of love and light to each and every one of you. Have a good one. If you'd like to support the work I do, go to paypal.me slash U-O-T-F. Thanks. Thank you.